Good morning. This is Father Adam. It's a beautiful morning. The sun is out and I just celebrated the holy sacrifice of the Mass at which I prayed for each and every one of you. And today, the 26th of March, Thursday of the year 2020 of our Lord, we had the reading um, from the book of Exodus where the Israelite people have made a molten calf for themselves while being stuck in the desert. Stuck. Notice that word stuck. Does it feel familiar? They feel lost. They feel abandoned. They are angry with God. And they make for themselves this molten calf. And they cry out to the molten calf, This is our God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. They create for themselves, in other words, something to worship. Now, let me set this scene for you. Moses has left them, and he goes um, to, the, uh, to the mountain, Mount Sinai, in order to have an encounter with God. And so he's, he's gone. He left them for 40 days. Now, we are in Lent right now, 40 days, very biblical, all right? And they are all by themselves. Hmm? Sound familiar? Left to fend for themselves, and they are desperate. They find themselves running out of patience, and they lack patience as they wait for Moses to come back and lead them. Now, Moses doesn't tell them how long he's going to be gone. He doesn't tell them how long he's going to be on Mount Sinai. So they, the Israelites become impatient, and they become convinced that Moses won't come back. They feel abandoned. They believe that they are now left to fend for themselves. And they don't know what to do. We feel like that right now as well. You know, it's like, Lord, have you left us all by ourselves to deal with this coronavirus? And the Israelites are on their way to the promised land as we are on our way to the promised land as well, from Egypt. And they're on the way, but they don't know how to get there. Uh, they, their leader has left them. Can you feel the desperation? I want you to place yourself uh, in their shoes. So what's next? They decide to make this uh, molten calf for themselves. Now, we may think that they are making another God for themselves, but it isn't so. They didn't think of another God for themselves. That's why they say here, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. They didn't make for themselves another God apart from the God of Israel. Now, sometimes a lot of people are presenting this like that. They tell us, oh, you know, they worshiped idols and things like that, but it isn't so. They didn't think of uh, this molten calf as a different God, as a God that is replacing Yahweh. No. They simply make something for themselves to believe in. In other words, they make something that represents this new deity that has been presented to them. You have to remember, the God of Israel is new for them. And they know nothing about him. That's why they need Moses. And they want something concrete, something tangible, something that they can touch in order to provide for them a sense of security. Now, uh, think of this, a sense of security. Isn't this something that we all want during these times when we feel lost and we feel insecure and we feel threatened? We want a sense of security. They want something to believe in. So this uh, molten calf, is the fruit of their imagination about the God that has been presented to them by Moses, a God they know nothing about, a God that is a mystery to them, a God that seems to be absent because they are in the midst of immense suffering, immense desperation. They want this God to be present and so what do they do? They make this molten calf. And this calf is a way for them to comfort themselves. 
Mm -hmm. The molten calf is a way for them to comfort themselves, to make the presence of the God of Israel felt. They want proof that God is with them. Now, they're not interested in abandoning Yahweh. They're not interested in abandoning the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham. They're not interested in abandoning the God of Moses. Not at all. They just want evidence of his presence with them. A presence that is elusive to them at this time because they can't feel him. When you get into a desperate, anxious, depressing situation in your life, you don't feel the presence of God. You just feel the moment of the desperation, of the problem, of the suffering. So this God seems absent and they want him to be present. They want something to touch, something to see, something to behold, a molten calf. You get it? Precisely this is what makes God angry in this first reading. We as human beings want simple answers to complex situations. We want quick and easy answers where there are no quick and easy answers or quick and easy fixes like the situation that we are in right now has no quick or easy fixes. It is a complicated and messy situation to which there are few answers and anyone and everyone wants answers right now right now there aren't any you get it stop trying to figure things out that can't be figured out stop trying to ask the question why did this happen why do we have this coronavirus when will it end how many people will die there are no quick and easy answers there are none so we have to stop trying to figure things out that can't be figured out why did this happen i don't know nobody knows we find ourselves in precisely the same situation as the Israelites in the current situation that we are facing, where almost by force we want to explain what is happening. We want to explain the unexplainable. We are lost. The Bible says, when I am lost, I am found. We are lost, but we want to be found quickly. We want it quick. By force we want to be found. So we make a golden calf for ourselves, just like they did. In other words, we are exactly the same. All these people who are saying that this is the end of the world, that this is the sign of the Antichrist. I mean, I'm so tired of reading all this garbage on Facebook and, and in the news and and, and listening to these preachers who uh, are fear-mongering and who are saying that this is a punishment from God for our sins or for our disobedience. And these are prominent people who have absolutely no idea what they are talking about. But see, we like quick answers. And so to tell you, yeah, you know, this is punishment for disobedience or for this sin or for that sin, you know, uh, like some people are saying, oh, this is because of abortion that God is punishing us. God doesn't punish us. We punish ourselves. And by listening to these garbage people, garbage stuff, to this garbage theology, you are punishing yourself. Life is tough as it is. It's tough enough. Stop listening to this stuff. That, you know, there they're trying to push on you this idea that God is doing this to you, that God is doing this to us. What kind of a God do you believe in? If you believe in a God who would send the coronavirus, you can have this God. I don't want him. You can have this God. If you believe in a God 
who would punish us with the coronavirus, you can have him. I don't want him. And by God, doesn't punish people with the coronavirus or in any other way. My God is love. Do you understand? If you believe in a God who is war, you're going to wage war. If you believe in a God who is violence, you're going to wage violence. If you believe in a God who is revenge, you're going to uh, seek revenge. If you believe in a God who is punishment, you're going to live by punishing yourself and by punishing others. So stop it. Stop believing in a God like that. It gets me angry. By saying that he's punishing us. We're just like the Israelites in many ways. And we are angering God by saying, why did you do this to us? That's what they were doing in the desert. Why are you doing this to us? Why did you bring us out of Egypt and bring us into this thirsting place, into this desperate place? Why did you lead us into this wasteland where we are starving and we are thirsting and we are lost? Why? Why did you lead us out of the Egypt where we were wasting food? Huh? Does that make any, you know? Yeah? Does that make any sense? You know? Because we were living, wasting food. Uh, just look in the casino uh, buffets. How much waste? Or in lunchrooms, at schools, the garbage cans have more food than the tables. Why did you lead us out of the Egypt of putting, putting more importance on our job and not on our family? Huh? Maybe this period of the desert, this 40 days, is for us to get back to where we are supposed to be, on our way to the promised land. It's a stop on the way. It's not a destination. This wasteland it's not our destination. We are on the way to the promised land. Jerusalem awaits us, but we are on the way there. But we get lost on the way. And maybe you were lost by putting more importance in your job, 14 hours a day, than into your family, than into your prayer life, than into your relationship with God, than into that which is more important. We say, why did you lead us out of the Egypt of putting more importance on accumulating wealth and money and growing my bank account and, and, and in the same time neglecting all that is important in my life. Maybe this is the stop that you need in order to get back on track and on the road to the promised land. Why did you lead me out of the Egypt where I had no time for you, God? Huh? Why did you lead me out of the Egypt where I took mass for granted or Holy Communion for granted? Now that, it, now that you can't go to church and receive Holy Communion in the, bo the body and blood of Jesus. Huh? Why? Because you needed this time. Think about it. To bring you back and to center you on the way. Everything is permitted by God for a reason. We don't know the reason, but we have to trust that it has a purpose because everything has a purpose. We say, why did you lead me out of the Egypt where I was a slave? Ah, does that remind you of something? We are slaves in Egypt, slave to your social life, slave to, to, to your wallet, slave to eating in restaurants and not cooking at home. Now you're, you actually have to cook for your family, huh? cook for your husband, cook for your wife. It ain't that bad to take a few weeks, huh? Think about it. Maybe these few weeks are going to, or however long it is, is going to serve you, to center you, to bring you back so that you can actually be on your way to Jerusalem, on your way to the promised land, on your way to heaven. Huh? Why did you take me out of the Egypt? where I was lost, where I thought that life lasts forever, 
where I thought that I would never get sick, that my children or my spouse can't get sick. Now this coronavirus is doing something in us, isn't it? Why? I want to be back in Egypt, you say. I want to be back in the casino. Yeah, pushing those buttons there, you know, as if that at your machine, yeah, as if that's going to bring you on the way to heaven. I want to be back in the Egypt of the nightclub or the, the Egypt of the bar scene, huh? Or, uh, yeah, I want to be back there. I want to be back in the Egypt of my luxurious, expensive vacations, you know, where I spend more money there than I do on helping people who need help. I want to be back in the Egypt where I was in the bars getting drunk and doing all sorts of things, you know, where I was behaving in a loose way. I want to be back in Egypt. Ooh, Egypt. I want that Egypt where I can spend money, money, money. You know, I want the Egypt of the security of the stock market where I just accumulate and stock up and up and pile on and on and on without any regard to the millions who are starving in the world while I continue to just pile on and on and on and on. And now people have lost millions. Maybe that will bring us back, that that isn't so important. Yeah, that maybe, uh, you know, I can do with 800,000 and 200,000 I could um, give to uh, those who actually need it, who may not have had the same opportunities as I have had in order to uh, make it? You know, communism is not the answer. I've lived there. What is the answer is generosity. Generosity is the answer where we open our hearts to the needs of others. And Christians are generous people to give, not because I have to, but because I want to, because that's what I'm called to. And this piling on and on and on mentality is what angers God. I want to be back in Egypt, we say. That way I can be comfortable. You know, I may be a slave, but I'm comfortable. God doesn't call you to be comfortable. God calls you to be holy. And to be holy, the word holy means different. That's what you're called to be. You're called to be holy. We say holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. I want to be holy. Be holy, the Bible says. Be ye different. But no, we want to be slaves. Because we want to be comfortable. Huh? Slaves to work, slaves to the casino, slaves to the bottle, slaves to drugs, slaves to sex, slaves to pornography, slaves to money, slaves to work, slaves to people. In other words, Egypt, in our way of thinking, may be the devil, but it's a devil that I know, and I want to be back to that devil because I know him, and he makes me comfortable, and I want comfort. God doesn't call you to be comfortable. God calls you to be different out of Egypt and into his holy life. In other words, into his different life. Wait a minute, says God. Wait a minute. Pardon this coronavirus interruption. Pardon this coronavirus interruption. All these people who are saying that this is a punishment from God, are acting exactly the same way the Israelites did. They are lost and they want easy answers. We don't know what's going on, so quickly we make for ourselves an answer, right? You know, quickly, let's have the microwave fix. We like the drive-through spirituality. Quickly. Stop trying to bring God down to our small, tiny level. God is holy. God is different. You don't understand him. That's normal. He's not like you. You are called to dwell in the holy, in the different. 
in something that you are incapable of grasping. You are called to accept a God who is above all a mystery. Do you understand that? God is a mystery. Mystery. Holy, holy, holy. I, I just said that at Holy Mass. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Even the coronavirus is here present for the glory of God. Do you understand that? Everything is full of God's glory. Dwell in the mystery, in other words. That's when we are entering into the mystery of the holy celebration of the Mass. That's when we say, God is different, and we are entering into the mystery to dwell in the action of the mystery, the God who is working in the midst of the mystery, the God who is holy, so His action is different. In other words, the Bible says, my ways are not your ways, and your ways are not my ways. God is different. You are called to trust that this holy presence is working even in the midst of the coronavirus that is working to change you. Yes. You notice that in this passage of the Bible that God asks Moses for permission. Moses implored the Lord his God saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt? with such great power and with such strong a hand. I will, so the Lord relented in, in the punishment he had threatened to, refl, uh, to inflict on his people. I will make your descendants as numerous as, I will make your descendants as numerous, the Lord says as the stars in the sky. Moses and God enter into a dialogue. And in this dialogue, Moses asks for permission in order God asks Moses in this um, passage for permission in order to punish the people. And I was reflecting on this. I mean, come on, God asking Moses for permission to punish the people? Why? Because Moses had this image of a God who punishes and who doesn't relent in his punishment. Okay, that's Moses' image, and that is the image of many of the religious people today. Moses has this image of a God uh, who uh, punishes us, who sends famines and who sends uh, wars and who sends the coronavirus, okay? That's the image Moses has. And that is the image these preachers have today who are telling you the very same thing. Like uh, Pat Roberts from the Christian Broadcasting Network who said that the people of Haiti were punished with, uh, by the tsunami and the earthquake because they practiced uh, voodoo, okay? Or uh, uh, the preacher in Dallas, Jeff, uh, Jeffress, uh, who has a Baptist church there, who says that the coronavirus is a punishment from God. All these people, they're exactly the same. They, they, their image of God hasn't evolved for 2,000 years. And the Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me then that my wrath may blaze up against them. Okay? Do you understand this? God is asking Moses for permission to punish the people. Why? Because Moses has this image of a God who punishes. And God says to Moses, no, I am different. You have this image of me as a God who punishes, but I am asking you for whether to punish people. In other words, the same question God asks 
us today. You want me to punish you? God is asking you that question. Do you want me to punish you? I want you to kind of relax right now and ask. And I know this hasn't been a relaxing reflection. <laughs> but uh, God wants to ask you. Do you want, God is asking you to, uh, to ask yourself. Do you want God to punish you? You want me to punish you, God is saying. For the only way to be punished is to want to be punished. In other words, we are our own worst enemies. We punish ourselves. God doesn't punish us. In other words, we punish ourselves by blaming ourselves and then we punish others by blaming them. We do the punishment, not God. We punish ourselves and then we punish others. And stop trying to attribute your human way ways to God's ways because God is holy. God is different. God is not like you. You are a punishing kind, a, a, a hateful kind. You have hate in you. You, you, you want revenge. You would send wrath. You would do all that stuff. God is not like that. God is love. God is love, the Bible says. Do you believe in a God who's love? If your God is love, then you will be love. If your God is war, if your God is violence, that's who you're going to be worshiping. I worship love. So this question, and notice, uh, the best teachers in the world teach with questions. That's why Jesus would ask questions all the time. That's the way the ancient rabbis would teach as well, you know, by asking questions, okay? That's the way God teaches Moses here, and that's the way God wants to teach us. God is asking Moses a question to teach him that he is different, to allow Moses to get the answer in his heart by pondering the question in his heart, okay? Leave the Egypt of your own limited way of understanding God. Leave the image of a God who punishes you. This coronavirus is not a punishment from God. Leave the Egypt of having a God who gives you easy answers and arrive at the promised land of the God who is a mystery a God who is holy, a God who is different. God changes the image that Moses has of him in his heart by saying, I am different than the way you have imagined me to be. I am holy. Now, you be holy 